your strategy with that when somebody brings you a gun shy dog is you know there's no there's no specific time there's no there's no framework you can say like no. it just no. it's just an individual development thing and it starts out like can you kind of walk us through it sure sure um the first thing i'm going to do is say any training the dog has is out the window all bets are off nothing the dog does is wrong because i'm going to fill my bird bag with pigeons and we're going to go out to the field and i don't care if he jumps on me i want him excited about birds if he catches one i don't care I want him to see me coming to the kennel and doing how I'm backflips at the door saying, let's go chase some more birds. Mm -hmm. And he's going to see birds and birds and birds until he can't stand it. He's so beside himself. And then the gun becomes background noise. But they're going to see they might spend a month or more just chasing birds every day. Mm -hmm. So do you five and 15 birds when you're developing that just crazy level of excitement and, and enjoyment around the dogs, or I mean, sorry, around the birds, then eventually, you know, a month into it, when that, that excitement's at like a fever pitch, you're, you're introducing like distant soft gun fire or something? Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll take a pigeon by the wings and I'll hold it close to the body and I'll tease the dog with it. And if you skip it low across the ground, they'll fly for about 20 yards or so. The dog can almost catch them and they stay low to the ground. And I want that kind of drive. I want the dog to have that much chase. I don't care what the dog does. There's no obedience required. No rules. Yep. All bets are off. It's party time. But in addition to that, eventually you're 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 introducing some some really low level gunfire in. Yes. So yeah, I'll carry my blank pistol, two hundred nine primer pistol in my pocket, and when the dog is maybe sixty or seventy yards away, hot on that bird's tail, pop behind me real yep. quietly. I had a guy. I told Ronnie this story years ago. I had a guy um, bring me a gun shy dog and he kept saying, there's no reason this dog should be gun shy. I've never done anything, et cetera. You hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. And so as I'm kind of debating with him on the phone, trying to get him to confess, uh, I thought, okay, when he brings his dog, I'm going to have to prove a point here. So as he met me outside the kennel, we're standing there talking. What he didn't know was that in my game pouch, I had my blank pistol. And as we're standing there talking, I reached behind me and popped off two rounds. You should have seen the guy jump out of his skin. I said, why did you jump? And he said, well, that startled me. And I said, yeah, but you shouldn't be afraid. You know what gunfire is. That's awesome. And it kind of busted him. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have to do that. You know, the people are way harder to deal with than the dogs are. Yeah. Well, yeah, especially when they're coming to you and they don't want to admit what's wrong. To give yeah. you all the tools to fix it. Yeah. So you asked me a minute ago about that, you know, the challenge kind of thing. You can't get this fixed. So this is when I, one of the earlier dogs I trained probably, oh, it's got to be close to 15 years ago now. I got a call, call from a really nice guy, had an English setter. He'd hunted over the dog for a couple of years. And they had, they were from Indiana. And he was in the UP of Michigan hunting grouse. Mm -hmm. And the setter had always done everything well before. He evidently was pointing a woodcock, and woodcock sits so tight, the dog was evidently pointing right over it. And so he called me, he said, I've got a dog that's gun shy and bird shy. I'm thinking, oh boy, this is going to be a fun one. And he said, I really don't think you can fix him. And I said, well, I'd be happy to try. And he said, well, I, I was hoping for suggestions. And I said, I don't know what to tell you. I haven't seen the dog. So he brought me the dog. And if you showed that dog a hobbled pigeon, the dog would crawl into the nearest vehicle trying to get away. I mean, there was just, and without bird desire, there's no hope for the gun. What they figured out and pieced together had happened was when they were hunting, this dog pointed a woodcock. And when the woodcock flushed, it went bill first up the dog's nose and punctured his sinus cavity, which is why we have a dog that's now afraid of birds. Uh -huh. So... Anyway, I had to take him all the way back to square one. It's I, I love hearing these stories from you because it's so common to hear that gun shyness is, is basically not curable. For the most part, it is. But most people really, when they realize the length of time it's going to take, they don't want to bother. Yeah. You know, the guys that say, hey, can you fix my dog in two weeks? And I'll say, no, let's talk about four or five months. Well, they don't want to stick $4,000 into fixing it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Do it's you, cheaper not to start it in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Prevention is 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 a good thing there. I mean, it, there's some stuff, you know, gun shyness is you you can you you can work around that. You shouldn't you you can work around gunfire introduction in a way where you can be really cautious 
and and get it done right. You know, an example of like you just told with that woodcock flying up and piercing that dog's nose and becoming bird shy. You know, you, you hear about that once in a while with just random exposure to a goose or something that when a when a puppy isn't ready, like there sure. are times like that where that happens, but it's just such a random thing. But gun shyness is our fault. Like very rarely do you think about a situation where a dog becomes super gun shy and not think, man, <laughs> that was that one's on me. It always is. You know, I'll hear somebody say, well, they were born that way. No, they're never born that way. Mm-hmm. Some dogs are more sensitive than others, more prone to it, but they're not born averse to noise. And they also think, well, my dog's fixed from gun shy. Why is he afraid of thunderstorms and fireworks? It's not the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. He's not uh, chasing birds there during the thunderstorm that's going through your house at night. Well, and it's a different noise and a different feeling too. You know, they differentiate very well. We don't give them enough credit. Yeah, that that's a good point. And it, they're not... You know, just we kind of forget about the situation they're in when these things are happening. You know, like when you're talking about getting a getting a dog, you know, kind of reigniting the 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 love of birds and the chase, or just being tolerant of the gunfire. You're also structuring an entire training situation around that. It's not something that they're just laying in, you know, on your floor at night, and all of a sudden this random storm comes in, and there's a whole bunch of thunder and lightning around you that you didn't plan for. And didn't didn't anticipate. Sure. Well, and the other thing people do, if the dog's even afraid of thunderstorms, let's say that's a great example. You've got a thunderstorm going, the dog comes over and acts all shy. Oh, it's okay. And they start petting it and babying it. Well, the dog learns that the way to get attention is to act afraid. So you ignore that situation and you start something fun and make them ignore the the problem, whatever it is that's scaring them. Totally makes sense that they learn like, oh, you know, they love attention. They love your attention. If they can get it one way, they're going to repeat that behavior. And our dogs are smart that way. Oh, dogs are exceptionally good emotional manipulators. They really, really are. 